All right, welcome. Good evening. Happy Friday, everybody. What's up? <clears throat> Excuse me. Hope you can hear me, hear me all. Uh, hope, hope you all can hear me. Uh, what's up, Jersey Red? Rusty, what's going on? Javez, what's up? How you doing? James from Syracuse. Thanks for joining. M.A. from Tacoma. Excellent. H.H., as always, thank you for joining. Elias, happy Friday. What's up? Peter, good day. Jody One, loud and clear. Awesome. Thank you. Mario from Norway. Excellent. Excellent. Jeff Steen, what's up? Happy Friday. Back at you. Nikki the dog, of course. Good to see you. Chad Miller. The Texas Spin Cycle Weather Machine. <laughs> Excuse me, we are indeed getting this last blast, hopefully the, the final blast of the cold bomb this weekend, right? Uh, crazy weather. <laughs> it's dropping down like crazy tonight. Uh, Jason in Perth, what's up? Good to see you. Ray, what's up? Thanks for showing up. Br Brisbane, Australia for uh, Mike MC. All right. Zane is here. Excellent. Igor, Mexico City. Awesome. Doug from Denver. Thanks so much, everybody. Super appreciate you joining in tonight, uh, joining tonight. Uh, sort of an acoustic focus tonight with the finger picking, but of course, as always, disclaimer, any of these skills we can, are transferable to the electric, right? Like, it's typical to do this kind of stuff on the acoustic, and it sounds great that way, but we can use all these skills on the electric. We can practice these skills on the electric, okay? So don't, don't feel like you have to have an acoustic to hang out and learn some stuff. All right. Jim Gregory, what's up? Good to see you. Excellent, excellent. Richard from Houston. All right. Thanks for joining. Glenn B. Out of town again. West Virginia. <laughs> Printed the PDF in the business center. Excellent. What's up, Alonzo? Good to see you. All right. So we've got this uh, happy Friday back at you, Steve. What's up? Thanks so much for joining. If uh, you're joining us for the first time, expand the description below the video, and there's a link to a PDF with the tabs that we're going to go through tonight. And uh, as always, uh, with these finger picking boot camp type uh, sessions that we do, I give you some suggested uh, fingerings for the uh, finger picking patterns, but they are not set in stone. Okay. Um, there are lots of different ways to do it and make it feel natural for yourself. So experiment with that. I'm just getting so, uh, just sort of giving a suggestion based on what I find the easiest, but it's not always the only way. All right. What's up, Dennis? Welcome, welcome, Doug. <laughs> there you go. Works for Mark Knopfler. That's right. How many players play the electric with no pick, right? There you go. Like that, Doug. <laughs> Oh, thanks so much, Steve. I appreciate that. Yeah, on uh, a Dwight Yoakam song we just uh, put up on Guitar Tricks, uh, kind of a deep cut a little bit on one of his more recent records, but lots of great stuff in that song. So thanks so much for checking that out. Excellent, excellent. And thanks to uh, Rusty for doing the roll call. All right, we're going to get going. Uh, we always sort of do a little finger-picking warm-up, trying to get the fingers moving a little bit. So uh, this first exercise, <clears throat> just a warm up. We're going to start in the first couple bars by just grabbing an open G shape. We're going to do the one with the open B string, right? Second fret of the A string, third fret of the high string, third fret of the low string, open D, G, B, and B strings. All right, so our thumb is going to hit the root on the low string. And then I'm going to grab ring, middle, index on the top, second, and third string, okay? Theodore, no worries at all. We can practice this stuff on electric too, okay? Um, skills are transferable back and forth. And a lot of times uh, we end up finger picking on electric for a lot of things too, okay? So no worries at all. All right, so. And what we're gonna do is 
come back to the root and now just move those same fingers onto the second, third, and fourth strings. Back to the thumb on the low string and then the third, fourth, and fifth strings. So you're cycling these fingers. Alternating with the root, right? So when you put that together, Next, we're going to go to a C chord, right? Third fret of the A string, second fret of the D, open G, first fret of the B, high string, open, okay? Once again, this time the thumb's on the fifth string for the root. And again, I'm going to start with ring, middle, index on the first, second, third strings. Back to the root, and then come back down, second, third, fourth. This time I'm gonna to switch to the D chord. So now my thumb's coming to the fourth string, right? Second fret of the G, third fret of the B, second fret of the high string. And again, so now I've got the thumb on the fourth string and then I'm still getting ring, middle, pinky, or sorry, ring, middle, index on the top, second, and third strings. I'm going to do that again, but change the shape to the second fret of the G, first fret of the B, second fret of the high string, which gives us a D7. So let's put this whole exercise together a little bit. Sounds like this. actually not bad musically right one chord four chord five chord back to the one chord in the key of g thanks jersey red what's up king 50 north nevada excellent um had to play it a couple times there to get it perfect and to play it as it was tabbed uh but that's the whole point of a warm-up right is that you're going to work through it work through it work through it get warmed up and then hopefully play it a bunch of times uh hitting all the notes as intended Okay, and getting ready to go to the next thing. Uh, what's really cool about this one is, you know, you've got that you're working on moving to different string sets with the same general motion, right? And getting the thumb involved in well as well. All right, good start, I think. Hanging in there, I hope. All right. So I've got a little bit of a tricky, uh, well, sort of next level exercise now, adding uh, some pretty uh, straight ahead melodies on two chord shapes. So uh, let me play the first two bars of this one. We'll sort of get a feel for exercise two here a little bit, okay? Once again, it's gonna feature the thumb and these three fingers, okay? The ring, middle, and index, okay? <laughs> All right, those, that's the first two bars. Whoops. So a little bit of a different uh, sort of flow with this one because we're doing it, we're sort of doing groups of three arpeggiations and also we're combining a thumb pluck with a higher note. Okay, what's up Kenneth? Welcome, welcome. Okay, so I've got the open D, and I'm starting with the open D string, uh, open D chord, but I'm starting with the open D string on the thumb and with the ring finger getting uh, the second fret of the high string at the same time. And then you're going to get middle finger index on the second and third strings. 
and then it's back up one, two, three with the ring middle index, but I'm pulling off to the open E string. Okay, so just on the D chord. That's the part. And then right after this, I'm gonna grab an A sus2 shape, which is the open A string, second fret of the D and G, and then the open top two strings. Okay, now I'm coming down a string set to this next chord, so. Thanks, Doug. I appreciate that. I think that's a nice sounding Martin, I think is what you said before you <laughs> went in it, before it disappeared. Thank you. I do have it plugged into my Axe Effects, so I got a little reverb, some compression, and some EQ to make it kind of sound a little sweeter, hopefully, for you guys out there. Um, so... So it's the same shape, right, of the pluck with the with the ring finger and the thumb at the same time and then coming down the middle to the index but now i'm applying it to the middle strings instead of the top strings right change okay and then for the next one i'm gonna add the pinky to the second fret of the b string to make that an a major chord right And then just end off with the open E string up top. You use your ring finger for that, right? So that whole first two, uh, the first two bars on that. So we're going to try that exact same thing with some different chords, and uh, the shape's a little bit different because now I'm going to a C add nine chord. So this is the third fret of the A string. I'm not actually going to be doing the D string until I get back to the D chord. So normally I would have the second fret of the D string. Um, and actually, in fact, I could do that. Uh, but I'm gonna, as you'll see, I'm gonna have to move that index finger pretty quickly after I do that. But I've got. Third fret of the A, second fret of the D, open G string, third fret of the top two strings. Okay, it's a C add nine. Nice. It's basically sort of a G chord with the lower notes moved up a string set. Doug's playing his Martin with a Fishman acoustic amp. Excellent, excellent. Uh, this Martin, I'm not exactly sure what the model is. It's some sort of a uh, Guitar Center exclusive model. Um, but I went to Guitar Center one day looking for an acoustic and I ran the racks and I uh, just love this one. So picked it up. Uh, some sort of MM something or other. I don't, not up on the models of the Martins, unfortunately, but I'm sure yours is great as well. Chad, quick question. What would you say is your electric to acoustic ratio of practice and playing? Uh, for me, it totally varies. It just depends on what I'm happy to be working on um, for guitar tricks, right? So, um, you know, teach songs on the website, right? So there's plenty of acoustic songs, plenty of electric songs. So um, when I'm practicing, I tend to pick up the electric probably because a lot of times, uh, well, it kind of depends on, <laughs> on what it is. It does depend, but uh, I would say overall, probably it leans electric unless a piece of music comes along that I got to work at and then the acoustic's going to be out, right? Working on it. If it's an acoustic thing that I don't quite have, uh, I'll have to practice a lot on it. So uh, that's a good question. It's always fluctuating for me. It just depends on what I need to do, right? Uh, Nikki the dog, compression's the only effect that I bought that I still don't understand. That's a tough one, okay? Um for uh, it took me a long time to sort of figure out what compression does. Um, what it kind of does is it squishes everything together a little bit, um, if that makes any sense. So, you know, when I play, I can play really soft and dig in and play, uh, you know, really hard. And the difference between the soft playing and the loud playing is called a dynamic range. And what, what you can do to set a compressor is to squish that together a little bit more. 
so that it really brings up your, uh, you know, brings up the volume of your lighter playing and matches it a little bit better with uh, when you play really hard. You know, actually what it's doing is when you dig in and play hard, it sort of, it sort of clamps that down a little bit. Um, it's really difficult to hear. Uh, so uh, what I always say is if you happen to have a compression pedal or if you have uh, a compressor in one of your model, maybe you have a modeling multi-effect that has compression uh, or some sort of multi-effects unit or a modeling effects unit, um, try the extreme settings and play through it and kind of see what it does to the sound. Uh, you'll really hear it on extreme settings. And what I always try to do is set it so that you're not really hearing it, even though it's sort of helping even things out a little bit. Basically what it does, it can make it a little bit easier to play the guitar if, if you've got some compression on it. Um, and it, uh, it also just controls your dynamics a little bit and get and evens things out. So it, it's pretty nice to have. Once I started getting used to it, playing uh, even on electric, I use it a lot. And, you know, just try to uh, kick it in and not have it really set, like affect it, unless you're going for some really specific effect. I'm sure that was clear as mud, but uh, that's about... Mm. <laughs> as detailed I can get on the compressor question tonight. So uh, uh, I think in the country course, there is a chapter on compression or uh, a chapter on effects and compression is one of them. You should check it out. I think Anders does it, the new country course. So check it out. Okay. Yeah. Equals out the volume chat. Absolutely. Uh, leaning towards the acoustic on practice, Glenn B. I love it. <laughs> Rusty, that's why some commercials are noticeably louder in the program. They do that on purpose, by the way. They can set that, <laughs> TV stations. <laughs> uh, there you go. Got the Boss CP1X. Cool, Jim. Excellent, excellent. Hey, John, what's going on? All right. Okay, so uh, we're into this second time through exercise two here. Uh, and I started off with this C add nine shape. And again, a thumb on the A string and my uh, ring finger on the top string, third fret. And then again, middle finger, second fret, um, index finger on the third uh, string, that is, second string, third string. Then what you're going to have to do is move your index finger down to the second fret because you're getting the second fret of the high string. It's a really nice sound. Okay, and then it's going to the D chord. So that's just it for the C chord. Okay, and then when it goes to the D chord. Okay, now I'm back to uh, open D, second fret of the G, third fret of the B, second fret of the high string. Again, thumb on the fourth string, but ring on the top string. Then I'm going to put the third fret down on the top string, uh, and then just pluck that. And then I'm going to stretch it and get the fifth fret. That's always a tough one, okay? So that second, uh, so that second half of the exercise. All right, so you put the whole thing together. Okay. Kenneth, is there very beginner, beginner videos to start from grand zero? If you're on Guitar Tricks, Fundamentals, Chapter 1. Fundamentals level one, go to chapter one, start there. Starts from the very beginning, okay? That's on guitartricks.com. Uh, we have some free lessons on the site if you're not a member, and I believe you can get a free trial. And uh, check it out, guitartricks.com, all right? Steve, how often do you think you restring the acoustic? Mine seems to go get dull fast, even though I clean them every session. Yeah, they do get dull fast. Mine are actually pretty dull right now, okay? <laughs> um, 
but I did actually, yeah, it, they went dull fast. I actually changed it not long ago, maybe six weeks ago or something. Kind of changed it, uh, changed the, the set of strings. So, uh, Gary Moore, no Uzi Pinky. <laughs> there you go. Well, sometimes you got to do it. Sometimes you got to get that pinky in there, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it, on acoustic strings, it just depends what you're doing, right? Like, uh, if you can kind of handle it, um, go with it as long as you can because acoustic strings are a little bit more expensive than electric strings, right? Uh, but th there is something nice about the brand new acoustic strings. But uh, yeah, they tend to kind of wear, you know, start to get a little duller after three weeks, four weeks, that kind of thing. All right, hopefully that helps. All right, so that's number two. Just, you know, adding, you know, just the whole thing with that was just adding, just adding notes onto the chord sh shapes. Right, uh, you know, I'm just framing some chords around it. That's the idea with that one. All right, cool, cool. Uh, exercise three, I've got sort of two different ways to play sort of the same chord progression a little bit. Chad, I'm not sure what fast fret is actually. I don't think I've heard that, heard of that before. You have to let me know about that one. That sounds interesting. Okay, so uh, sort of James Taylory here in exercise three. Uh, just try and play it here. Oh. Pinky Payne, what's up, Paul? Nice to see ya. <laughs> okay, one more time. Let's see if I can get the. Fast fret allows for smoother movement across the fretboard. Cool. So uh, I'm assuming it's something to just uh, sort of you wipe on the strings a little bit, some sort of wax or something, probably. I'll have to check that out. Fire and Rain, yes, a la Fire and Rain, okay? It might be in a different key, might be a little bit different than that, right? But uh, let's look at it because uh, it's cool to kind of add some slides in a little bit, right? So uh, fourth fret to the sixth fret on the G string, and that's like a 16th note. One more time. Using my thumb on the, on the G string, okay, for that and then just using the middle and the index there. What I'm sliding into is this A major triad right here, okay? Barring down at the fifth fret of the top two strings and yeah, chapstick for guitars, that's it. Okay. That's it. Um, so the slide's kind of quick and then it just slides down to eighth notes to get that uh, arpeggiation. What's up, Sophia? Thanks for joining. Awesome. Then you're doing the reverse slide from six down to four, but you've got the same triad shape, okay? Boring down to the third fret now of the top two strings, fourth fret of the G. So let's just look at that bar. A little bit lighter, maybe. Okay, now we go to the D chord. So at first we're hitting the D, open D string with the thumb, and then the second fret of the high string. And even though it's not tabbed out, and I mention this all the time, I'm grabbing the whole D chord here even though I'm just picking single notes out of it, just in case I hit the wrong string or whatever, right? So I've got second fret of the high string, but then I'm gonna lift off, get the open E string, and then grab the third fret on the B string. 
And then I'm going to bar down here, second fret of the D, G, and B string, but I'm only going to pluck open A string and then the G and B strings and highlight that open A major chord. Okay, so. And then a little bit of a melody here. So I've got the third fret of the B string. I'm still holding the second fret down from that chord, right? So I'm just at, adding the third fret to the B string, and I'm going to pluck with the index and middle G string, B string. Okay? Third fret of the B, and then the second fret of the B, and the second fret of the G stays constant. And then with the index finger on the G string, fourth fret, just a single note, and then back to the second fret. Okay? So that whole time I can be just anchored. Just hold that index finger flat. Okay, so put it all together. <laughs> One more time. Cool stuff, right? <clears throat> hitting melodies, hitting slides. Kind of a cool way to uh, absolutely, Doug, with you on that one. Hey, Salut, back at you, Eli. Thanks for joining in France. Excellent. Uh, 3B, okay? Um, sort of outlining the same chord progression, just with a little bit, uh, kind of a different idea here. So I'm going to open up the open B and open high E string. I've got the open A string, and I'm just going to play some double stop shapes that sort of outline the chord changes from the first part of the exercise. This first one's just going to be an A major, sort of taking it from A major double stop, right? Seventh fret of the D, sixth fret of the G. Now my finger picking pattern, I'm going to drag the thumb a string to the D string. Okay. And then I'm going to get index, middle, ring, and then back down. But then I'm actually going to on that on the D string, the very last note before the chord change, I'm dragging that index finger back. So when I'm going up, I'm dragging the thumb up. When I'm coming back, I'm dragging that index finger an extra string. Okay. It's just how I do it. It's not written in stone. You do it however it feels natural for you. Okay. But this is sort of a, you know, how like you, you sort of do a downstroke or an upstroke with the pick, depending on what direction you're going on the strings. It's sort of the same idea of what I'm thinking here. Kind of like that. Same shape here, seven and six from the D and G string down two frets to the fifth fret or the fourth fret of uh, fifth and the fourth of the D and G, okay? Steve, we'd love to see that. Are you kidding me on Guitar Tricks? We'd love to do some Fire and Rain. I can't remember if we ever had, I don't think we ever had any James Taylor on. We did have some James Taylor on there. I'm not sure if it's still on. What do we have? Uh, uh, it wasn't Fire and Rain, I don't think. We should definitely have gotten that one at some point. Anyway, hopefully. <laughs> Rusty, thanks, as always, for checking in. <laughs> thanks, Paul. appreciate that. The Goblet always gets a shout out. So I'm moving this A shape, 7th fret of the D, 6th fret of the G, down two frets, okay? Uh, so now I'm outlining a D major, but I've got these open strings, sort of give it a different sound, right? Okay. And then 4th fret of the D, 2nd fret of the G. 
So it's sort of A, G, and then D, even though, but with the, uh, with the open strings, it sort of changes the tonality a little bit, but we're sort of outlining the chord progression, right? Like that. Okay, right? We can go. Okay, so. There we go. That's what we're going for in that second uh that second uh, exercise. Okay, so let's see. Let's catch up here. Uh, uh, quest, question about Simple Man. Is it picked or finger picked? It's picked. I believe they use the pick on that. Okay. But that said, if you're going to play that on an, on an acoustic, you could finger pick it, right? It's kind of just open to whatever interpretation you want to do. Okay. Uh, Doug, Sweet Baby James. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, but Steve... Thank you for checking that out. Yes, I knew that How Sweet It Is was on there. Uh, still on there. And then Handyman, I'm not sure about that song, but uh, I know I didn't teach it. But uh, there, you got a couple James Taylors, but obviously not the hits. <laughs> Trying to get the hits on there, right? And Mockingbird, that's right. Jody won. Mockingbird. That's it, too. Excellent. Okay, cool. <laughs> Uh, Sophia wants some Foo Fighters. Man, love to teach some Foo Fighters. I'm sure they're trying their best to get it, right? <laughs> Thank you, Doug. I appreciate that. All righty. Okay, okay, okay. So that was exercise three. Exercise four, I went there. I, I went there. I went to the stairway. Uh, hopefully changed it a little bit, but uh, sort of the stairway... <laughs> Went to the stairway in episode uh, exercise four. Okay, so we've got. Uh, I'm just going to use the thumb, index, middle finger. Okay, and I'm going to be moving the thumb between the D string and the G string, starting off with an A minor, the upper part of an A minor bar chord. But I'm just focused on the top four strings. Okay. This is the picking pattern I'm going for. Okay, so that's the seventh fret of the D string and the fifth fret of the high E. Plucked together, middle finger and thumb. Index finger is going to get the B string, then the thumb is going to get the G string, and then back to the B string with the index finger. Now I'm just going to move the root note on the D string down chromatically. Okay. And by the way, this chord progression is not only Stairway, it's tons of other songs. <laughs> Stairway is not on GT. No, unfortunately, no Zeppelin on GT. By the way, I, I'm not doing Stairway right now. Like I'm sort of outlining the same chords as Stairway, but I'm not playing it like Stairway, right? I'm do, I've got a different picking pattern and I'm not adding some extended notes to it. I'm just simply moving the roots down attached to that A minor triad, okay? Oh, H, H, there you go. That's the first bar. And then we're going to go to an F major seven. So now we're going to take that uh, finger picking pattern, but shift it down a string set. Okay. So I'm going to get the eighth fret of the A string. I'm going to sort of bar down on that. I guess you don't have to, but sort of bar down on that. And that's going to set you up for the next chord after this. But uh, adding the 10th fret of the D, ninth fret of the G, 10th fret of the B. I'm going to play the finger picking pattern, same finger picking pattern, same fingers, just on this new string set, right? And I'm going to play it twice. And I'm going to sort of shift down one fret, barring down at the seventh fret from the A string all the way up. 
now I've got the ninth fret of the D, seventh fret of the G, but tenth fret with my pinky on the B. It's an E7 sus4, and then I'm gonna move that pinky into the ninth fret. And that takes you to the, the five chord, right? If you're in the key of A minor, right? So put it together. That's what we're going for on that one. All right? So a little bit tough to go from here. Cool. Oh, the tab for the F. Oh, man. Yep. Jason, thank you. As usual, I have a mistake in my tab. <laughs> For those of you who have printed it out, please mark this mistake. Uh, it's not eighth fret of the D string. It's the 10th fret of the D string. You are correct, Jason. Thanks for the heads up. I appreciate that. Not a week goes by. and Keep in mind, everybody, I proofread this stuff. And I, I'm always convinced that it's right. And this is why we need editors, right? So uh, thank you for check for uh, double checking that. But yes, the F major seven is the tenth fret of the D, not the eighth fret of the D. <laughs> I apologize, everybody. Okay, what does that sound like? Uh, <laughs> uh, That's not a nice sound, okay? I apologize, everybody. That's what you want, the 10th fret, not the 8th fret on the D string. Doesn't sound good. Uh, I don't like it when my mistakes don't sound very good, so I apologize. Thank you, Jason, again. All right. Let's check out a sort of jazzy, swingy kind of thing right now. Some plucking, right? Sort of piano plucks a little bit. We did that a little bit of that last time. Okay. C major seven, of which I did tab this out correctly. Same shape as the F major seven. Okay. Here it is down in the third position. Okay. This is exercise five. We're going for here, so a little bit slower. <laughs> yes, indeed, that's what resolves are for. So I've got this C major seven, and uh, notice we're in six eight time, okay. So sort of groups of three, one, two, three, two, three. So that right there is sort of half a bar, right? Okay. Then I'm going to head up. I think I'm going to play this one first, and then we'll break it down a little bit. Okay. So this is how it sounds. This is what it sounds like. Exercise five. That's what we got going on. So I've got the C major seven, thumb on the A string, plucking with my index, middle, and ring on the D, G, and B strings. Just letting all that ring out, okay? And then the next chord is the C sharp diminished seventh chord. And all you have to do, as long as you're borrowing down with your index, is move that middle finger to the fourth fret of the A string. Now I've got 
fourth fret of the A string, fifth fret of the D, third fret of the G now, fifth fret of the B string. Very tense sounding chord, right? So. Pretty cool. Next one, D minor seven, fifth position. So I'm barring down with the fifth fret from the A string all the way up. Got the seventh fret of the D, sixth fret of the B, okay? Just half that bar there. And then I'm gonna move up to this shape. This is a G7 with the root on the D string. And if you look at the top three strings, if you slide that all the way down, it's a D7 shape that you're moving up so that you've got the seventh fret of the G, sixth fret of the B, seventh fret of the high string. And then you just use your index finger on the root, which is the G, fifth fret of the D string. Okay, so this one's a little tricky. So you have to change string sets on the A all the way up to the B, and then I'm gonna to move to the D all the way up to the high E. I'm gonna repeat that bar. Okay. And then back to the C major seven, which is what I started with, but then I'm just gonna lift off to the open A string while I'm still holding top three notes. And these three notes are actually an E minor triad, right? that with an A in the bass. Right? So we can challenge yourself a little bit once you get the hang of it. Are these seventh chords? Yes, indeed they are. So, uh, uh, Seventh chords are really prevalent in jazz, right? We start to use these seventh chords. There's all types of seventh chords. There's major sevens, minor sevens, dominant sevens, and that's what we've got going on in this exercise, okay? Going from the C major seven, diminished sevenths, up to a minor seventh to a dominant seventh, okay? So we're kind of covering the whole field different types of seventh chords in this one progression. That's pretty standard in the jazz world. And then beyond that, just adding extensions on top of that is really common as well. So you start getting into the nines, the 11s and the 13s, right? Glenn B, maybe I had trouble because I got up at 2 a.m. Oh man, I hear you. I hear you, brother. Hang in there. <laughs> Some coffee or, hey, it's Friday night. Who knows what else, right? So just a little fun little jazzy thing there. Uh, exercise six. So uh, while we're thinking in a swing and a shuffle, let's do a blues. Okay. Uh, came up with kind of this uh, plucking blues riff. That's kind of fun. So That's what it is there. So let's slow down a little bit. So that's our groove, right? Our shuffle groove is one and two and three and four and one. Okay. <laughs> I hear you, Nikki. Uh, uh, Nikki the dog, that is the dog that's named Nikki. Uh, I hear you, man. It's uh. Man, it's a deep well. You start getting into jazz. I, I'm I'm ba I'm barely on the surface of jazz stuff. I, by no means am I a jazzer, but it's fun to mess around with that kind of stuff. You know, and just a little goes a long way if you can kind of like, you know, kind of hack out some of that kind of stuff. It definitely goes a long way. It's pretty fun to play for sure. <clears throat> So I'm going to be pulsing with my thumb on the low E string, and this is this would be over the E chord or the one chord in a blues, right? And then plucking with the index, middle, and ring once again on the D, G, and B strings. 
barring down at the second fret on the first one. Back down to the thumb. And then it's going to be the open strings. And then I'm hammering onto the first fret of the G right after the pluck. Back to the thumb. Then plucking the open strings and then the second fret on all those strings. So. All right, we could take this riff and move it to the four and five chords, right? Just doing the exact same strings, exact same plucks, and just moving it up the neck. So if I go up to the fifth fret, okay? So that's in the middle of this line. You'll see it, uh, four chord over the A chord. Now I have to sort of bar down on the fifth fret. I should mention that I like the way it sounds with sort of some palm muting on the low string. Okay. So I've got. Uh... All right. We can take it further and just move it up two frets and get the five chord, right? down and then I gave you another turnaround <laughs> so that's what we're going for there so a couple couple things with the thumb right there a couple thumb picks using my index and middle finger on the B string, high E string, and just starting at the third fret of the B. Groups of three triplets, right? And then with the thumb, going to move string sets down. The thumb and the index middle at the same time, this time on the G and B. And hammering on once again to that first fret of the G string. That sort of outlines that E7, E, open E thing, right? Let it ring out. Then go to the five chord with the chromatic thing with the thumb on the A string. Open first, second fret. Now we're getting a, a B9 shape, which is the second fret of the A, first fret of the G, and then bar down on the top three strings. And more of the plucking, right? Thumb, thumb pluck. A couple times there. Right, a little bit of a blues. Sound good? Cool, cool? <laughs> Hopefully. All righty. I apologize, everybody. I don't know what's going on with my sinuses are draining in the back of my throat or something. So really weird. It is that the weather, man, is just up and down and it's just wreaking havoc with my sinuses. So I apologize. Uh, came across this Iron and Wine song with a really interesting sort of uh, chord progression and uh, some cool, a cool finger picking pattern. If anything else, just you know, a finger picking pattern that you can kind of mess around with a little bit. Let me see if I can play this whole thing and we'll break it down a little bit. All right, so that's our, our uh, that's gonna be our finger picking pattern. Thank 
really cool chord that it starts off with. I didn't bother sort of charting out what this chord progression is because it's a kind of thing where it sort of has a tonal center and you're just moving melody notes around. Um, it's sort of like a D major sus, right? There you go, Tulsa. I hear you, man. Uh, so fifth fret of the A, fourth fret of the D, open G, third fret of the B. And just starting with the thumb. Ah. So we're going to go thumb and then index on the G string, thumb on the D, and then middle finger on the B. That's So you see the thumb motion, right? Now it gets tricky because once we move the root note, sometimes we're going down to the low string. Okay. And uh, going between say the low string and the D string. Uh, but still keeping the shape up top, fourth fret of the G open, uh, fourth fret of the D open G, third fret of the B, and just moving the root notes, okay? So then the open string, I get the A, Fifth string, uh, fifth fret of the low string, and then back to the fifth of the A string. So that first bar. And then it's going to go all open strings to start, and we're just going to move the bass note. Okay, so starting with uh, sort of an E minor seven, I guess this would be. And again, you're going from the thumb from the low string to the D string, but. The second fret is the low note, second fret of the A, and then open A. So some really good practice here, even though it's a little bit of a strange chord progression. Pretty cool, right? All right, James Cody, would you recommend developing a personal picking pattern to use most of the time, sort of like what Anders teaches on guitar tricks? Yeah, it's sort of my disclaimer, right, is that uh, a lot of the, the fingerings that I uh, sort of uh, put on the tab is just sort of the way that I, it feels natural to me, right? And so there's a lot of, uh, you know, like you've only got really four fingers that are really strong for finger picking and you've got six strings. So a lot of times you got to be dread, you know, some fingers have to be doing double duty somewhere and it just really depends on the musical context of what you're doing too. Like a lot of, you know, if you're, if you're just using the top three st strings, then certain fingers will make sense, but you'll fall into patterns um, of what sort of, as you develop, for what feels strong and natural for you. And you could ap start applying it to all sorts of different situations. I think that's sort of along the lines of what Anders is talking about. Okay. So just, uh, you know, just ex work, exercise some stuff and just, uh, you know, see if you can find the most natural way to develop it. And then what will happen is uh, you'll get to the point where you, you're not even thinking about, what fingers are going where you're just sort of doing it because sort of your way of doing a picking pattern is sort of built in the, you know, what fingers you use and all that kind of stuff. And so, so you can, you know, just start jamming on chords and not even think about what's the finger picking pattern. You just start messing around with it and it'll just be in there because of how you've developed it. So hopefully that's not, uh, hopefully that's, <laughs> An answer to the question, it's probably clear as mud, but uh, uh, I, I think, you know, definitely Anders teaches that for a reason, right? I think it's sort of loosely related to the, you know, sort of what I'm saying with this stuff. Great question though, thank you. Paul, could you recommend me some songs for pick, finger picking? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what I do is, uh, you know, if you put uh, uh, finger picking songs into Google, a bunch of stuff comes up. And actually a lot of that stuff is on guitar tricks. Like you can kind of cross-reference cross it. If you want If you want to stick with guitar tricks, 
do it that way. I find that the search on guitar tricks is not is hit or miss. I wish there was a way that we could take some of the song list and identify this is finger picking. Like if you could put, uh, it's sort of not really there as far as the search capabilities on the site. So I'd actually use Google and just, uh, you know, see if some ones pop up that uh, you're into, because that's another thing. It, it should be something, you know, a song that you're into learning, spending some time learning. Right. So, uh, so I would do that. Uh, you know, dust in the wind uh, comes to mind. Um, Blackbird comes to mind, that kind of stuff. Right. So sort of classic iconic ones. Of course, there's tons more than that. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you. Yeah, welcome home. I uh, can't remember the name of the band on that one. But yes, yeah, Sophia, thank you. Good suggestion. Doug, on that blues progression, could you go over that progression? Was that of one, four, five? Yeah, so just so that it's a little clearer, exercise six. Yeah, landslide's another good one. Although I'm not sure we have it on guitar tricks, Glenn. But that's like an iconic one for sure. Um. So exercise six, uh, all I'm doing is showing you the one, four, and five chord with repeat signs. But what you'd want to do is plug that into a 12-bar blues. Okay, so if you're familiar with the 12-bar blues form, Doug, um, you know, starts off with four bars on the one chord. Then it's two bars on the four chord, two bars back on the one chord, and then we get to the turnaround one bar on the five chord, one bar on the four chord, and then the turnaround section, the last two bars, which I tabbed out, okay? So I didn't actually tab this as a 12-bar blues. I just sort of tabbed the sections, and it's sort of up to you to kind of plug it into whatever form, whatever blues form, if that makes sense, right? So if I was going to play this blues riff uh, in a 12-bar blues, I might do it this way, okay? So... Four times and then move up and back down five chords four okay I just played that at lightning speed kind of sloppy but just to sort of get, give you a context for what those parts, how they should be put together. Okay. Cool. Cool. Excellent. All right. Let's see what else we got. Keep on trucking hot tuna. We got that on there. Yeah. That's a good one. King 50. I think last finger picking uh, session, I kind of did something based on that a little bit. More than words on guitar tricks. There you go, Sophia. <laughs> uh Steve's got a question on a song like Missing Heart. Instead of just playing Guitar One live, wouldn't you in reality play electric all the way so you can get all that nice steel stuff? Absolutely. Yeah. It, you know, like when we say uh, single guitar performance, it really comes down to the context of how you'd be playing the song. Because we did the single guitar uh, performance as some, you know, uh, just play the acoustic all the way through to be able to accompany a singer or if you want to sing and, and be able to play the song through, right? Um, at least the guitar is holding down, you know, sort of all the chords and everything. But of course you can, uh, you know, if you're going to play this with a band or something, right? Or if you want to play with the backing track and incorporate all that great electric guitar stuff, you can fill in all the holes in between with just some of the chordal stuff from guitar one, right? And, and just, you know, uh, pick all those electric parts you want to play and then just find out where the holes are and just take from guitar one and kind of outline the chords a little bit on the electric. So it all comes down to just uh, the context of what you want to do. And, and of course, there's so many different situations. We can't sort of account for all of them when we say, here's the single guitar performance. So that's sort of the thought process on it. A lot of songs we will if it has an acoustic guitar that goes all the way through, that will usually be the single guitar performance, just because someone might just want to learn the acoustic and you know sing the song through kind of thing. All right, uh, what else we got? Uh, Paul, learn more than words and dust in the wind. Thanks for the other recommendations. Cool, and hopefully something like that. 
There you go, leader of the band. I'm gonna have to check that out, Doug. That's a good, uh, su good suggestion for a future uh, finger picking session, right? <laughs> uh like rolling stone has some finger picking electric guitar does it it's, it's kind of picked isn't it sophia i'm not sure simple man picked right but again like there's no rules to this stuff right and grab an acoustic and finger pick like a rolling stone and simple man no problem right <laughs> thanks doug i appreciate that so there's one more little exercise here i'm running out of time uh real quick but the travis picking right so uh I won't go into great detail on it. We'll just look at because the picking pattern is the same uh, kind of throughout. I'll just play that first one. Uh, let's see. Right. That's where we're going. So I'll just play this through. So another sort of descending uh, progression in A minor, starting with the A minor and then A minor seven with the G in the bass, and then a D minor seven with an F sharp in the bass. And then this weird chord, the cage chord for the D major, I find is easier to do with Travis picking than kind of coming up here. Doesn't quite sound quite right. This is the C chord moved up two frets, right? Sort of the caged uh, D major chord up two frets from C chord. Okay. Yeah, we got the uh, full F, uh, F bar chord and then just slide it down one fret and keep the fingering, right? Just lift up the bar. You got E major right there and then back to A minor. Okay, so it's just really just keeping that thumb motion, right? the idea then you've just got those other fingers coming in so travis picking i usually end off with a travis picking exercise on the uh, finger picking sessions and if you're new to this you've got to go slow with this to sort of get the feel of it so go really slow at first stay on one chord I have to go a lot slower than that to kind of get the, the vibe of it. But if you do lots of repetition, you'll start to feel it. Right? You'll start to be able to speed it up a little bit. Okay? And it'll start to be built in a little bit more. But you got to go slow, lots of repetition. Just make sure you keep at it. Okay? And that goes for any of these finger picking patterns, right? You just got to go slow until it feels like it's under your fingers a little bit. Okay. Hopefully that helps everybody. And I super appreciate the turnout tonight. Thanks for all your questions. Great questions as always. Great comments. Thank you, everybody. Uh, hope everybody's safe from the, the, uh, <laughs> the winter blast, the final winter blast here in the States. To those of you elsewhere, I hope you're well. Uh, have a great weekend. Have a great week. I appreciate you coming as always. Uh, same time next Friday, we're going to be back on electric, but of course, easily transferable to the acoustic. We're going to do rhythm styles, I think, next week. Not sure what volume it is, but I hope you join me then. Uh, was this a Zeppelin song? Not, no, not really. Uh, I guess it was sort of uh, Babe, I'm going to leave you, right? Yeah, babe, I'm going to leave you sort of, but not really. Sort of a different, uh, sort of the same chords, but I think there's a different D chord in there a little bit. So, all right. Yeah, volume 1,000, right, Sophia? <laughs> We've been doing this for a while. <laughs> all right. Appreciate all the kind words, everybody. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend. Have a great next week, and we'll see you Friday.
Thanks a lot. Take care. And over and see you later.